President Biden is unveiling his 2024 fiscal year budget proposal. The president is set to announce the plan at a union hall in Philadelphia a little bit later today. The proposed budget includes lowering costs for families, bolstering Social Security as well as Medicare, and reducing the deficit. The country's debt currently amounts to somewhere in the neighborhood of $31.6 trillion. CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe joins us now. Ed, it's good to see you as always. The Biden administration wants to cut the federal deficit by $3 trillion over the next decade. Part of this would come from a new billionaire's tax and raising the corporate tax rate. How would that work? Uh, in essence, guys, good to see you both. The, the, the goal here is to raise taxes on folks making more than $400,000 a year and on corporations as well, the White House, knowing that this is a big hypothetical spending plan, not one that would ever actually be enacted, wants to make the political point that the wealthiest Americans and the big companies that employ, some of them or from whom they at least reap benefits, deserve to be or need to be paying more into the system to help pay for uh, health care, education, national defense and, and other programs. The president today unveiling this budget uh, at this hour with plans to go to Philadelphia. He's on his way right now uh, to talk about it at a union hall there. Again, this is a political document, not a spending plan that ever gets enacted, in part because it gets ripped apart and put back together by Congress that has thoughts on how the money should be spent as well. And with Republicans controlling the House and far more interested in across-the-board spending cuts, uh, it's unlikely that much of what the president's proposing has a shot. Right, let me just follow up on that for a second, Ed, because as you point out, covering a budget is a policy story in part, but of course the big overlay is the politics. So right. you mentioned the Republicans. Let's drill down a little bit more on that in terms of how Republicans are reacting to the proposal so far. Any chance that it could be enacted largely as is or somewhat as is with the GOP controlling the House? It, it, you know, we'll have to wait and see. This is, is literally just being released as we speak. Uh, but we know, again, uh, go back to the State of the Union, for example. You heard uh, a lot of the uh, concern and criticism of what the president was proposing there, some of which is now in this budget proposal. They all agreed in the room, though, remember, to not touch Social Security and Medicare, the solvency of those programs, understanding that those are sacrosanct for so many voters across the country, especially seniors who have a more reliable voting pattern. Um, and so at this point, the White House is saying, Republicans, if you're serious about this, show us your budget plan. Put something together so that a debate can ensue and we can figure out, perhaps by the end of the fiscal year or at some point later in the year, some kind of a spending plan. But what it also signals is the president saying, look, if you do indeed want to help curb inflation, bring down the deficit, cut government spending, here are some ways we could do that. A big way to do it would be to generate more income and tax higher earners. You're also going to see things in this budget plan, for example, like boosting the Pentagon's budget to more than $800 billion, uh, what's one of the largest Pentagon budgets at peacetime, but with all the concerns about China's growing influence in the Pacific, the ongoing operations in Ukraine, the White House will be pushing for more money. Among other things, he's also pushing for the highest pay increase for federal employees since the 1980s, about a 5% pay increase uh, that would affect or certainly help 2.1 million civilian federal employees across the country. Ed O'Keefe reporting for us from the north line of the White House. Thank you so much, Ed.